Hello everyone and welcome to Lush and Salty Aquariums. My name is Stefan. Thank you for coming to and supporting the channel. I appreciate it. It's awesome showing people my tanks. It really has enhanced the hobby for me. Um, and I imagine you as well. What a great thing, the fish tubing community. So we're back at the 10 gallon SR Aquaristic. Actually, it's more like 11 gallons. This is a uh, partial black water tank. At first, I may have been inclined to set up uh, full on black water, but I just love plants too much. And in the super high uh, acidic range of a legit black water tank, most plants just don't fare very well. That isn't to say I couldn't do it or you couldn't do it, and many have, and in some respects, so have I with this aquarium. But I did want um, good plant growth and the option to maybe just revert to a planted tank moving forward without relying so much on um, botanicals to stain the water. Yet I did want uh, the spirit of a black water tank to fully encompass what I was doing here. It's something I haven't really done before. So I did a crap ton of research, uh, watching some of your videos, I'm sure anyone else out there, if, if you've done something with black water and you did a hashtag, I watched it. Why partial black water? Well, the plant thing I already told you, plus I um, didn't think I'd be able to maintain, sustain, and be patient with a truly black water system. Uh, I am using a canister filter. I do have biological media in here and one uh, piece of sponge. And if you get too low on your pH, the biological media becomes a bit of a moot point because you're not going to have the uh, cleaning effect that biological media brings to planted tanks. But if you're down in the high sixes like this tank is, I think it's about 6.6 .6 pH right now uh, because I've got uh, UNS aqua soil, driftwood, and a bunch of botanicals that definitely will lower the um, pH. And the rock I have in here is petrified wood, so it's inert and it won't affect uh, hardness or anything like uh, pH. So I'm guessing I'm going to be able to easily keep the uh, pH in the mid sixes, which is good because uh, A, it's in spirit of a black water tank, but also uh, my, my featured residence of this aquarium, the licorice garami, and I'm sort of looking at the back end of one now as it swims there you go. You see them back there by the piece of driftwood or petrified wood. There's actually a pair. Um, I have about five in here. There's one well right in front. Bingo. Uh, sexing them is really hard at this stage and uh, it's quite doable. It has to do with the usual uh, fin structure, body structure, colors, etc. But they were bought unsexed from the wet spot. What an awesome purveyor of uh, fish that online uh, places. I know they have a brick and mortar. Uh, it's probably wonderful out west, but I'm never going to go see them. Well, I never say never, but the wet spot has all kinds of rare and special fish. And so I got a group of these licorice garamis, which love uh, high, high acidic water. Uh, they're actually, from what I've researched about the licorice garami, a couple interesting things. Uh, a, they can thrive in water that is inhospitable to most uh, fish, which is like as pH in the threes and fours. At that stage, it won't you won't be able to support much microfauna or uh, life in general, fish life, plant life. So you basically have uh, dark, dark tea stained waters and leaf litter, right, and sticks and things that fall in, but not much in the way of other fish and inverts, etc. They just aren't gonna be very common there. And the licorice garami has found a way to make it work for them. Uh, one thing they don't do uh, is 
use their labyrinth organ like any other gourami, so they're not going to uh, reach for air at the top of the water. At least this is what I've read, and I haven't seen it, so I have no reason to doubt that uh, pretty uh, well-documented factoid. Uh, but they do need uh, clear, clean water that has oxygen in it. So uh, to complement that without creating tons of flow, I put this little canister filter, which is so cool. I got it from Landon online. Uh, it's like a little silver ADA super jet, but it's small, uh, size of a coffee can with these uh, beautiful stainless steel inflow and outflow. And that is giving me um, legit flow, but not heavy. And I've uh, augmented that with an air stone, which will break the surface of the water and create gas exchange, which will help keep this water oxygenated despite low flow and the uh, low pH, etc. stuff I've talked about. Kind of learning as I go here. I, I don't profess to know exactly uh, how to keep a licorice garami, and I've already talked about my trepidation regarding going full on with a black water tank, but I really dig the way the botanicals look in here, um, and the textures and the the au naturel effect that they give offsetting all this wonderful anubias that's cryptarva there anubias petite larger anubias which will do well anubias will do well in a black water um, because of the low light which they which they uh, thrive under and i knew i wasn't going to have intense light so i have this chihiro's uh, king of value they call it it's sort of their newest product and you can turn up the intensity of the LEDs which have RGB built into some of them but you can't adjust the color scheme and that's that's fine because skewing on the white side is what I had in mind and I have it about at half strength and so if I went to a full-on planted tank I could always just uh, crank that sucker up, you know, clear up some of these botanicals maybe, and we would be, we would be a planet tank, just like a whole bunch of my other aquariums. But I do keep um, some of the stained water, and that will help these other residents be happy and look beautiful. Classic neon tetras, and then uh, less classic, very uh, rare actually, these are called Morse code tetras. Look at that beautiful specimen. And the reason they call them that, two reasons. In the right light, they have a dot, dot, dash, dot, dot pattern across their midsection. You're not kept getting that here, but it does exist and I do see it. Uh, and also because of the way they behave, they stand, stand, you know what I mean? They, they are motionless in the water and they tend to flicker uh, reminiscent of the tap 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 of a Morse code you know that's how ships at sea would communicate I imagine they still do but uh, probably not like in the olden days but you see the kind of that 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 sort of the way it just kind of stays there uh, there's a bunch of them in here but they're not a uh, tight schooling fish they're less of a schooling fish than the neon which is a ch more of a shoaling fish uh, so they all occupy their little territories and they kind of do what this guy's doing. There's another one right there. I don't know much more about them. Again, the wet spot, those in the licorice garami, two rare, more exotic freshwater species that I got in the same shipment from that wonderful store. Uh, I also have a group of pygmy coriadoras and they're all fat and happy. And I think I got those, if not from the wet spot, then I got a couple bags at a swap I was at. I can't remember, obviously the wet spot sells them. Pygmy Corridors are the smallest quarry cats you can get. And so they're one of the few that's pretty much ideal for a 10 gallon tank. If you start to get into the bigger ones, uh, you need less of them. And then Corridors love, love to be in groups. and. Uh, no exception here. I think I have a dozen in there. And while they're not beautiful, they are adorable. And they do swim, as many, many point out, uh, when they're doing a species spotlight on the Pygmy Coriadora. 
they will spend a lot of time in the middle of the water column, which is very atypical of a Coriadora. You see these two just tooling around. In some respects, they were like dither fish uh, for the uh, licorice garamis. But because they weren't really pulling the licorice garamis out of their uh, reclusivity, I did get the neons uh, as to supplant the Morse code tetras. Now these are all small fish, all well under an inch, and maybe the neons will reach an inch. Um, I don't know if they'll ever become so-called jumbo neons, but I don't want them to. I want them to stay small and just add that touch of color that the Morse code tetra and the licorice garami as of yet really haven't brought to the aquarium. You also will see a couple clown killifish. Uh, as in my last video, I talked about how they are obscenely beautiful and perhaps my favorite nano uh, aquarium fish. Let me find one just, uh, there, there's one right there. He's right at the top of the water. And these are juveniles, so they're not particularly brilliant right now. But I added those in as well, just because the water top, there he is would be very uh, static, not a lot of uh, motion, and they love kind of looming like a lot of killifish near the surface. I have a ton of floating plants, which I hope keeps them from jumping. And I hope this environment is such that they don't wanna jump, but it is in their nature and I know it's possible. And I've talked about clown killifish jumping uh, extensively, so I won't belabor this video with that. Uh, one of the things I absolutely could have done with a straight on black water is emerging plants. And so I've got Brazilian pennywort and from Jump Street, it started growing out of the tank. So I was so pleased. I mean, look at that tendril. I didn't do anything other than spritz, spritz them down a couple times a week like I do with this pothos. And there's a beautiful knot pothos. I forget what it's called with the pink variegated. That's stuck into a little uh, acrylic pothos holder, uh, basically a print on demand uh, box with serrations. You can get them all over the internet. I've got a couple in many of my tanks and I stick the plants into there if I can't find a great place to rest them on the surface. Here I'm doing a combination of the two and uh, that has worked immediately for me. I've been so happy with the outside of this tank. I was trying to dial in what was going on in the center, you know, the main portion of the aquarium. And I think I'm a lot closer to being satisfied, believe it or not, because I added the uh, super common, but, un, you know, fabulously beautiful neon tetra. You know, the Neon Tetra of 75, 80 years ago was considered a massive, exotic, and highly desired aquarium fish when it first started showing up in America. I read a whole history about it, and they were coveted uh, for obvious reasons. No one could believe a freshwater fish had colors like this, and that once uh, acclimated and brought into uh, a, a nano aquarium that it actually could uh, survive, you know, and over the years they've been bred into uh, ubiquity, you know, they're everywhere and they're inexpensive, but, and you know, there are problems. They can be overbred in the same gene pool and become sick and stunted, etc. But there's no denying their beauty. And if you sort of shut your eyes and then open them and pretend it's like 1935 and hardly anyone has seen a fish like this and you have a group how exciting would that be they're just a thrilling little fish they love black water just like the licorice garami just like the morse code tet tetras um, and you know the partial black water will not be detrimental to these clown killie fish up here and the inverts. I tried to put in my favorite red uh, ram's horn snails and kept the brown ones out. I think that's a bladder snail there, the one that's kind of dull with a different shell shape. Um, but I don't have, there's a beautiful red ram's horn. 
When they're red like that with the red foot and the orange red shell, they're pretty special. Um, and if you can get a group of those in lieu of just the brown drab ones, you know, go for it. They're a little bit more money, but often breeders, you just sort of get them and you can create your own stock. You know, if you have a bunch of babies and some of them are showing red, you just keep those and feed the others uh, to fish or cull them as you see fit. So, uh, oh, and I mean, already look at that root stock. One thing I did is I put this El Cheapo uh, light, this little LED light that has some of the bulbs that are not even working. And I attached that on a timer into the back lower corner to pump a little light deep into the dark back of this aquarium. Cause with the black background, uh, I could easily lose like, half of my vision um, trying to find those licorice garamis back there would be a real drag but this light on a timer it comes on pretty much when the regular lights come on illuminates the root stock of that pothos and it's so cool it, I mean that to me is just what it's all about and the fantasy of having your fish tootling about in there if not spawning in those uh, overhang you know those stalag tights if they're still you know that's as that's the effect they create like a stalactite in a cave eventually um, if I don't do anything these roots are gonna go right into the aqua soil and you know that's a good bad it depends on you know what you want but once they start really getting a foothold down there it becomes more and more of a hassle to remove them without disrupting the tank so something to be mindful of I consider it a high-class problem though because that that effect is so beautiful coming down from this effect, which I find so beautiful. Um, I've said this a bunch of times, but f uh, as you move on in this hobby, the way corals become more important than fish for saltwater keepers, uh, for some of us freshwater people, planted tanks uh, and the, you know the plants become like coral. They're super desirable, far from an afterthought and very much a part of uh, this hobbyist's thinking when I'm uh, researching and, and fantasizing about a new tank as I was with this one. And so I am delighted by the success and progress of the plants and I'm getting really good with uh, what's happening on the inside here. And believe it or not, I mean, I love that I have licorice garamis, but while they are still becoming comfortable in this new aquarium, I'm really happy I can just look over and see a bunch of neon tetras, honestly, not to mention the pygmy corydoras, adding instant satisfaction as, as I view this aquarium. What do you guys think, huh? Uh, are you down with the partial black water? Or should I have gone all in? Does it matter? What do you think? Uh, I will respond to any comments. I love hearing from you. And if not, I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, keep your hands in the tank. Ciao for now.